All right, so Tony, what's the relationship between hormones and fat loss and muscle gain? And what is the most important factor in fat loss and muscle gain? And can you also link it to the studies? Well, that's a pretty complex question. Uh, and, has, and there's been a lot of research, a great deal of research that's been spent looking into this topic. Uh, they're actually different questions. The role of hormones in muscle gain is a, a, a slightly different question to the role of hormones in, in fat loss. Let's start with muscle gain first because historically it was always viewed that the hormones that were released around the training period, uh, testosterone, growth hormone, insulin-like growth factors, so on, that these hormones played some kind of role in the tissue remodeling after exercise and, and the growth of muscle over the, the weeks and months of training. Uh, however, a few years ago, this started to be questioned, in particular by a researcher in Canada called Stu Phillips. And I remember at American College of Sports Medicine a few years ago, there was a debate with Stu Phillips and Bill Kramer, who is regarded as one of the top hormone and strength training experts in the world. And at the time, before the event, I thought, wow, Stu Phillips has really got his work cut out for him because uh, Bill Kramer is a giant in the industry. And, and as it turned out, Phillips created a very compelling argument that the hormones that were released around strength training time actually didn't really have an important role with the tissue remodeling. Rather, it was several other, um, at those times, newly discovered cell signaling molecules that had more involvement in tissue remodeling. And since that time, there's been numerous papers from Philips Group that has demonstrating that the hormones released from training, testosterone, insulin-like growth factor, um, growth hormone by itself, that these hormones play absolutely no role in muscle hypertrophy and strength gain. And the most recent citation for that is the Weston Phillips paper published last year in the European Journal of um, Physiology. And we'll post that on our Facebook site for people to read. But they examined the anabolic hormones and looked at strength and they looked at hypertrophy and there was no association between these hormones and muscle gain. The next question, what about fat loss? Uh, are some protocols better for fat loss than others? And there's been an argument by some that strength training is better because it releases growth hormone, whereas aerobic training doesn't. Aerobic training releases cortisol, and cortisol, by its definition, is catabolic, should break down tissue, probably increases muscle gain, and the interval training or the strength training does the opposite. It uh, increases growth hormone, and that uh, leads to a loss of fat mass. Uh, this has been really well studied and I'm surprised that this viewpoint is actually still in our industry because in the whole room studies where subjects are kept for several days at a time and their energy in and energy out is really well controlled, where they have exercised and measured how much energy they expended from either high intensity aerobic training, uh, moderate, easy, prolonged, continuous aerobic exercise or resistance training, like how we would do it, uh, total body workouts, major muscle groups, when they have been refed the food that they expended, typically four to 600 calories, and they were in energy balance, fat oxidation didn't predominate and they didn't lose weight. And this has been shown in males and females, in untrained, in well-trained, in endurance athlete, in strength athlete, uh, in the young and the old, the data is so compelling that if the exercise does not lead to a negative energy balance, then fat oxidation cannot predominate and one doesn't lose weight. But what about growth hormone? Growth hormone has been well known since it's been studied to operate on the fat oxidative pathways. In other words, uh, growth hormone tends to promote fat burning. But if it doesn't lead to an energy balance, that is you perform weight training or interval training and you expend 300, 600, 900 calories, regardless of what that is, if that over the 24 hour period does not help a caloric deficit, then the fat loss doesn't predominate. So the question is, what role does hormone play in fat loss and muscle gain? And the answer is not much. It's a, it's a very complex area, but there seems to be other targets of muscle building. The ribosomal proteins, uh, mTOR, these are all targets that help the muscle grow. In terms of fat loss, the key governor, of course, is creating an energy deficit. So whichever exercise contributes that to that negative energy balance, then that is the exercise that will help. And studies that have gone head to head, looking at aerobic training versus resistance training, 
have shown that aerobic training is superior for the loss of fat tissue, as recorded by CT scan and MRI. These and DEXA scanning, they've shown a superior loss in fat loss compared to weight training. Why? It's more energetically expensive to exercise for an hour aerobically than it is weight training. And I think this as personal trainers is the key point that we need to use a combination of weight training because it builds skeletal muscle, that aerobic training expends energy significantly and we should use both of them as personal trainers. The hormonal hypothesis in scientist mind is, is practically dead and buried and the, the governor of fat loss is creating a negative energy balance. Uh, one final point I should say in conclusion is that a lot of scientists are really compelled that humans evolved to lose fat tissue when there's high energy flux and that is that you are exercising regularly to expend a lot of energy but you're also eating significant amounts as well so that the deficit isn't enormous because we know that creates a uh, reduction in metabolic rate and a host of other metabolic and hormonal abnormalities as well. Uh, these days is commonly called as metabolic damage or metabolic disturbance. Uh, it's, it's related to the female athlete triad is that when you create too much deficit, uh, the body systems tend to shut themselves down. So I'm an advocate of, and I think there's a lot of scientific support for personal trainers encouraging daily exercise to get a lot of energy expended and making sure that that deficit by eating more as well, that we only create small amounts of deficit and that over the long term I think is optimal for promoting a loss of fat tissue, the gain of muscle tissue and without really disturbing the hormonal system too much.